This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I have some bad news for you regarding Bitcoin mining pool centralization. But first a little bit of background. This is a Bitcoin mining rig. This is what's called an ASIC, an application specific integrated circuit. And what it is, is it's a computer that's designed to do one thing and one thing only really, really well, which is SHA-256 hashing. You have an input, you hash it, you apply it through the hash function and you get an output. And this is what Bitcoin mining rigs do. They guess numbers in order to try to find a number below a certain difficulty target. I would say a better name for Bitcoin mining rigs would be to call them hashers because this is really what they're doing. I got this idea, I believe, from Bitcoin Mechanic, and I'll link to his very good article in the description notes below. Now, you don't need a license or permission to mine Bitcoin to be a hasher or to run a Bitcoin mining rig. You could just buy an ASIC, you plug it into the power, you plug it into the internet, and you start hashing and earning Bitcoin. But here's the problem. The hash rate of the Bitcoin network is very high at the moment, has been very high for many years. The hash rate of your individual ASIC, your individual mining rig, is very, very low by comparison. Now, the more hash rate that you have as a percentage of the total Bitcoin network hash rate, the more frequently you will win the opportunity to mine or win the next block and collect the Bitcoin miner reward, which is currently the miner subsidy 3.125 Bitcoin plus transaction fees. If you are solo mining with one ASIC like the one we just showed, it might take you 90 years, 100 years to mine a single block, to win a single block. And this is a problem because life is short and electricity bills are often quite high. Do you really want to go decades spending money on electricity and never seeing any Bitcoin in return and probably in the process having to replace your mining rig many, many times as it depreciates? The solution, you take your mining rig and you join what's called a mining pool and you mine with other people who are running their own ASICs and you'll get paid in proportion to the amount of computing power that you are contributing. You'll get paid whenever the pool finds or mines a new block. I'm simplifying here. There's something a little more complicated, which we might talk about in another video. But basically, this is the principle. Being part of a mining pool helps to smooth out your mining revenue so you don't have to pay high utility bills and wait 90 years to find a block. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to help to support the channel by clicking the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, and share this video with a friend or family member. So mining pools make good financial sense for hashers or mining rigs. Mining pools are also unfortunately a centralizing influence on the Bitcoin network, and they always have been. This is something we always struggle against. For example, if I run a big mining pool, I can benefit from economies of scale, and then I can use that to pay my hashers more, offer them other benefits like reduced trading fees, for example, if I also own a crypto exchange or a Bitcoin exchange, and thereby, by exploiting economies of scale, I can become even bigger as a mining pool. A mining pool that controls more than 50% of the Bitcoin network hash rate can choose to use that hash to attack the Bitcoin network. This is what you've probably heard of, 51% attacks. How do we mitigate against this? Well, to begin with, there are very strong economic incentives not to do this because Bitcoin mining rigs, these ASICs, are only good for one thing, as we saw, which is SHA-256 hashing. If you destroy Bitcoin, these mining rigs become basically worthless. You have to sell them for their scrap value, and you lose billions of dollars in equipment value. So it doesn't make sense from the standpoint of an economic actor, a profit-minded actor, to spend a billion dollars in equipment, hosting equipment, uh, warehouses, Bitcoin mining rigs, and then destroy the value of that equipment by attacking the very network that the equipment, the ASICs, were designed for. This is part of the genius of Satoshi's design, that the Bitcoin miners earn money but are dependent on the network for that money retaining its value. It might make sense to a hostile nation state attacker to do this, to do a 51% attack, but not a profit-minded uh, a profit-minded investor or actor. So how can Bitcoin hashers, ASIC owners, help to stop a mining pool from attacking Bitcoin if it becomes too large and decides to do a 51% attack? Well, what ASIC owners can do is they can quickly point their mining rigs to a different mining pool. This is very simple to do. It just takes less than a minute. And the threat of losing business like this looms over every mining pool and can help to keep them honest 
and prevent them from wanting to attack the Bitcoin network. Special note, mining pools exist in cyberspace. People frequently confuse this. They exist at a point, an IP address or a node. So they exist in cyberspace. Mining pools do not normally custody the actual ASICs. Mining pools, people often confuse them with mining farms, which look like this. You just have a whole bunch of ASICs in a single location. And these mining farms can point their hash to any mining pool that they want. This is the beauty of the internet, obviously. In practice, mining farms will usually point to a single mining pool that they have a business relationship with. Mining pools themselves may also own one, of, one or more of these mining farms and point the hash from the farms to their own mining pool. To summarize, Bitcoin mining pools are a practical necessity due to the unpredictability of finding the next block. But Bitcoin mining pools are simultaneously a threat to the Bitcoin network if they become too large. Now, historically, when a Bitcoin mining pool got too large, Bitcoiners would notice, they would call them out, and then mining rigs would leave, stop pointing their hash to that mining pool until the mining pool was well below 50% of the hash. This is what happened with the famous G hash mining pool, which almost got to 51%. It was called out online, and then mining rigs deserted them. Now, today, as you might guess, based on the geopolitical power dynamics, the two largest Bitcoin mining pools are run by China and the U.S. China runs Ant Pool. The U.S. runs a mining pool called Foundry. Together, they control about 51% of the hash rate. Unfortunately, we can see on mempool.space here. Here's Ant Pool at 25.93%, and here's Foundry USA at 24.69%. And then you have all these other mining pools. This is not a good thing to have two very large mining pools with this much of the hash, but there is some consolation to be had that US, the US and China don't agree on much or trust each other. They have a lot of trouble working together these days. This stalemate has existed for a few years in terms of the two largest mining pools, but recently we've learned that the situation is actually much worse than we thought. There's actually good evidence that all Chinese mining pools have been working together as one massive mega pool or pool of pools. You can call them the Chinese pool mafia, controlled by the notorious Jihan Wu, who's known among Bitcoiners as a long-term bad actor in the space. He was very prominent during the big blocker. He was on the big blocker side during the block size wars of 2016 and 2017. He sided with other bad actors like Brian Armstrong of Coinbase and Barry Silbert of the Digital Currency Group to try to push through larger blocks through a hard fork. Jihan has always been very interested in trying to exert maximum control over the Bitcoin blockchain and the Bitcoin network. Jihan Wu is also very famous for something he said a few years ago, uh, F your mother if you wanna F. This has uh, always been associated with him in a sort of meme-like manner. Now, one reason Jihan Wu has all this power is because he is the CEO, or at various points he's been the CEO of Bitmain, which is, I believe, still the world's largest manufacturer of ASICs and mining rigs. And this would make sense that it would be based in China because China makes all these things. So Jihan Wu is the power behind Bitmain. Bitmain also happens to own Antpool, which is that large Chinese mining pool that we we're talking about. And it's now come out that Antpool and Bitmain have been acting as a pool of pools. They're basically encouraging all the different Chinese mining pools to mine using the same block templates. We're not really gonna get into this in this video, but to all intents and purposes, this creates a mega pool. So it would appear that the world's largest manufacturer of ASICs, which is Bitmain, also indirectly controls all of the Chinese mining pools. This was discovered by a few people online. Mononaut, a single custodian, now controls the Coinbase address. This is where the Bitcoin mining reward is always sent of at least nine pools, representing 47% of the total Bitcoin hash rate. We have Ant Pool, F2 Pool, Binance Pool, Brains, BTC.com, SEC Pool, and Poolin. Foundry is the KYC US mining pool that we talked about. It has, as we said, approximately 25% of the hash rate of the network. The Chinese mining pool mafia, as we might call them, has 47% of the hash. So this leaves just 28% of the Bitcoin hash rate outside of this geopolitical duopoly. And just China itself is very close to getting to 51% or more than 50%. Now in practice to execute a very effective 51% attack, you need a lot more than 51% of the hash rate. But this is where people begin to get worried when one pool gets close to 50%. 
what are the practical concerns Foundry and the Chinese mining pool mafia could collude to exclude Bitcoin trans transactions from blocks, i.e. corporate or government imposed censorship. So Jihan Wu could decide to do this on his, his own or together with Foundry or the US government or Chinese government could apply pressure or collude to exclude certain transactions that they don't like. Now, the good news is you could still get your transaction through by using one of the mining pools in that 28% of the hash. And how would you entice them? Basically, you would just keep raising your transaction fee. And if the Chinese mining pool mafia and foundry decided they did not like that juicy transaction fee, maybe someone in the 28% would pick it up and include that transaction in a block. So the Bitcoin network is still quite robust. But this is definitely a disturbing trend and something we need to keep our eye on. Are we plebs and Bitcoin node operators, people who run full nodes, at the mercy of the Bitcoin miners? It sometimes feels like this. What do we do if Bitcoin mining pools start to behave really badly, like censoring transactions, empty block attacks, other types of 51% attacks? Is there anything that plebs and node operators can do? Fortunately, there is, because Bitcoin is like a giant Mexican standoff. We all know this from, I believe it was from Reservoir Dogs, where there's sort of mutually assured, assured destruction between the miners and the nodes and other parts of the ecosystem. Is there a way for Bitcoin nodes to punish the Bitcoin miners or mining pools? Yes, there is, but it's always referred to as the quote unquote nuclear option because it's something you never wanna to have to use, but it is there in the background and everyone's aware of it. What this refers to is we could get together and change the proof of work hash function from SHA-256, that hashing algorithm we saw earlier in this video, change it to a different proof of work function. This would need to be a hard fork and we would need full consensus across the rest of the Bitcoin ecosystem. Obviously the Bitcoin miners would be against this for obvious reasons, but this would be the nuclear option. What would happen to all those mining rigs if Bitcoin nodes decide that they will accept proof of work only from a different hash function? All of the mining rigs in the world will be bricked. They'll be completely worthless along with all of Bitmain's inventory of ASICs because these ASICs are only good for one thing. They're only good for doing SHA-256. And if you don't have the BTC network, there's no real money to be made from these. So this is called the nuclear option for a very good reason. You really never want to have to use it because it could backfire and destroy Bitcoin as people begin to attack the chain with CPUs or GPUs while we're waiting for new ASICs to be developed. So this is the risk to doing it. But just the threat of this possibility hanging over the miners and the mining pool heads is probably enough to keep them in check. This is why we have nukes. We hopefully never have to use them, but they act as a form of deterrence. So what can you do today to help? For one thing, if you're running an ASIC, do not point it to a Chinese mining pool. Don't point it to any of them because they're basically all controlled by ant pool at this point. Also, don't point it to a KYC US pool like Foundry. There's no reason you should have to give up your personal information to do Bitcoin mining. You can point your hash to Ocean as I do. It's completely anonymous. You don't have to give them your name or anything. You just point your hash and it looks like they recently found two blocks in the last 24 hours. They also have the added advantages. They have different templates that allow you, if you don't want spam to be included in any blocks that are mined by Ocean, you can use one of their templates. I'm not an investor in Ocean or otherwise being paid or compensated by them. I just mine with them using one of my mining rigs. Another great thing about Ocean, you can choose block templates, as we said, that exclude all the spam that bad actors are trying to get included in blocks. So this mining pool centralization, this is a situation that we'll continue to watch. It's certainly not a reason to sell your Bitcoin or get too pessimistic, but it is something to keep an eye on and to let people know about. And by shining light on this, this can really help the situation, which is why I'm making this video. It comes down to this, how Bitcoin is simply too valuable for everyone involved to have this thing fail. So at some point it remains, I guess, Jihan Wu's next move, but he's been defeated before. He was defeated when he was part of the New York Agreement. He was def defeated by plebs and node operators and small blockers. But again, Bitcoin is simply too valuable for everyone involved to have this thing fail. And so there will be a way out. Hopefully the Mexican standoff will continue to protect all of us, as we can see here with the office. If you want a little more in-depth version of this video, Marty Bent did a great interview with Matt Corallo on TFTC, which I'll link to 
in the description notes below. This goes into some of the more technical aspects of how Bitcoin miner, miners or hashers are paid, as well as how block templates work. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.